welcome to our live stream Bible school today. We're in Alexandria, Louisiana at our ministry uh, studio and happy to be home. Oh, it's awesome. And, beautiful uh, day. Fun. It's a beautiful day in Louisiana. And uh, wow, I just went out and saw some uh, baby ducks and some baby geese in our <laughs> little pond. They're it's just spring. so cute. Yeah. So it's a new uh, season. we're going to have some duck gumbo tonight. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Mark, remember that uh, couple they made us blackbird gumbo one time? One time. But Black we bird. never even tasted it because we, we were repelled. It was repulsive. <laughs> well, we looked in the pot <laughs> and it just didn't look good. No. So no blackbird gumbo, you please. Just don't ever know what people down here will throw in the pot. In Louisiana, I mean, wow. You Might be like a possum in there. <laughs> a little Cajun music. I actually have a Cajun music song on my. Oh, yeah, that Zydeco thing. Yeah, you know, I like to like play it for George and Terry Pearson because, you know, Pastor George, is a he plays the accordion, and a Cajun accordion is kind of a little bit smaller. That's and different. Got a little bit of special uh, zip to it. Yeah, it's got different keys. You get a different accordion for different keys. Yeah, so I actually had a Cajun accordion until I saw Pastor George playing the accordion, and I said, well, I just gave him my Cajun accordion. <laughs> You're yeah. so kind. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, we're going to get like a little, some music out of Pastor George. I don't know. He plays Italian music, honey. Oh, uh, yeah. How does that go? All right. Well, so much for that, for the music for the day. Um, two rednecks that went fishing. They went fishing. I did. Yeah. yeah, those two rednecks went fishing, and they really wanted to go fishing, but they didn't have a boat. So That's they had problem. to rent a boat. Okay. And so they rented a boat, man. They went way out in the middle of the lake, and, boy, they just caught so many fish. They were just thrilled. And so they finally said, Mark, well, you said it like a Louisiana guy. Thrill. You said they, no, you said they caught fish. They caught so many fish. I caught so many fish. Yeah, well, don't mess up my joke. Okay, okay. So anyway, so these two Cajun guys, they caught so <laughs> many fish. And uh, they were so happy about it. Yeah. And so they finally decided to go back, you know, to the shore. So uh, they're in their little rental boat. So they headed back to the shore. Yeah. And so on the way back to the shore, then one of them says, the other one says, well, I sure hope you marked that spot where we caught all those fish. And the other said, oh, absolutely, I marked the spot. He said, well, how did you mark it? He said, well, I put an X in the bottom of the boat. <laughs> and so the other, Genius. One said, the other one said, well, you idiot. How do you know we're going to get the same boat next time? <laughs> so anyway, that's, I that's, think the team liked this one. <laughs> Oh, uh, wow. Well, there is joy in the Holy Ghost. I'm so glad. And uh, there's joy, the joy of the Lord. And a merry heart is good like a, medicine. Yeah, I think we're going to be joyful and happy and healthy today. Take your medication. Come on, get ready. Laugh a while and take some medication. And they say your body can't tell the difference from uh, a fake laugh or a real laugh. I know. I tell so people just bust out laughing. Happen. Yeah, just go Doesn't ahead and laugh. have to be anything and funny. It, it'll help your um, immune system, your digestive system. It'll help your blood and pressure. And, ladies, instant face lift. Face lift, and it makes you better looking. And men. Yeah, it makes you better looking. Smile. Or, when you're happy, people forget that you're ugly. You know, <laughs> you're like, Keep smiling. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this side shows your teeth. Oh, your tooth. You know, show me your tooth. Yeah. Uh, so some people don't smile. I said, tooth. Uh, so you know what you, uh, if you have a, a whole row of NASCAR fans, you know what you have? You have one set of teeth. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, <laughs> did you know that the toothbrush was invented in Arkansas? Yeah. Because if it was invented anywhere else, it would be called a teeth brush. <laughs> all right, so toothbrush for Arkansas. So all my friends in Arkansas, please don't get mad at me. <laughs> Um, anyway. Well, I've seen some of those people in Louisiana, too. Oh, yeah, in Texas. Colorado. Uh, yeah, Colorado. the country people and Colorado's everywhere. Colorado's got some real hillbillies in Colorado. Yeah, you better leave my state alone. That's your state. Yeah, that and that's a real state of existence there. I the, know. The, God bless. The God help in Colorado. Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. It's all the people in Denver. It's just Denver. It's Denver. All Denver, right. Boulder. Yeah. <laughs> 
But there's some salt of the earth people up there too. Salty, they're salty. Yeah, they're good Christians, good pastors. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, All right. we're happy today, and we're going to stay happy. Are we going to study about this? I brought you here to have fun. And we're going to have a good time. Yeah, and so I like to say people uh, never became sad until sin came. Sadness didn't come until sin came. But Jesus is the cure for sin, and he's the cure for sadness. I like that song. I like to sing, you turn my sadness into gladness. Yeah. My sorrow into joy. Now I'm singing mm. and I'm dancing. And I will shout for joy. Yeah, wow. So <laughs> uh, today we're talking about the Holy Spirit. And so um, there is joy in the joy. Holy Spirit. And this is called the Holy Spirit is a genius. He's brilliant. If you listen to him, he'll make you look smart. And so we encourage you just uh, go to the website, markhankins.org. Say, I want the free book. It's our gift to you. The Holy Spirit is a genius. Read the book. Talks about the power of praying in the Holy Spirit. Or you can just call the office, 318-767-2001. If you're from another country, we'll send you a PDF version of this book. And uh, you can read it and get some fresh uh, information, revelation about the Holy Spirit. So let's look at a couple of those scriptures where it talks about the joy in the Holy Ghost. You know, I just feel like people are watching today that you might be struggling in your in your body or your soul, you know, but today you're going to take your medicine. It's going to feel good. You're going to come out. It doesn't taste bad either. Come over and be blessed. That's right. Amen. So we're not under the circumstances. We're over the circumstances. Over the circumstances. All right, so look at Romans 14. Oh, the, <clears throat> I, I have another one 17. after you. And then Acts 13, 52. You have yep. that one? No, I have another one. And you have another one. Wow. Yeah. All right. So all right, let's go over this one here. Uh, Romans 14, 17 talks about the Holy Spirit, but it uses this terminology concerning the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So it's very interesting that he would mention the uh, kingdom of God or uh, the dimension of God or the presence of God or the will of God, uh, the reign of God, the kingdom of God, he said, and it's righteousness, peace, and then joy in the Holy Ghost. So we're going to talk a little bit about this joy in the Holy Ghost. And so that means you can't get really a sad Holy Ghost, it don't look like, I mean, so when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they're always full of joy. Wherever he comes, he makes it happy. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Yesterday we talked about the Holy Spirit and how he can take a mess and brood over it, yeah. you know, like he did in creation. Yeah. And when God spoke the word, it turned into something beautiful. That the Holy Spirit is yeah. not afraid of any no. kind of mess. No. And he'll take what is out of order, bring it into order. He'll mm -hmm. take what seems to be ugly and a mess, and he'll make it beautiful. Mm -hmm. So that's the power of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, and He never gives up on people. Mm -mm. And I like to say um, that the Holy Spirit has a reputation for working with some real losers and making them champions. Man, that gives me hope. <laughs> he makes us champions. He makes In us champions. In other words, the Holy Spirit takes everything that Christ has done for us and makes it a reality in us. Mm -hmm. He makes it real in us. Or the Holy Spirit takes everything Jesus has done for us and is doing for us, translates it into personal victory. Mm -hmm. Victory, our freedom, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So learning how to recognize, respond, and yield to the Holy Spirit is the key to victory. Yeah, and He, is, uh, he brings the message of righteousness. He's for you, not against you. Yeah. So you have righteousness. He makes us right. He gives us a gift and mm -hmm. says, look, I paid the debt that you owe, mm, wow. to, and I'm, I'm making you right. It's okay. Yeah. It's such a gift. Right. And that brings peace. Peace in your heart and your mind. Peace with God, peace with yourself. Yeah. And then that leads to joy. Joy in, the Holy, in the Holy Ghost. Actually, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, they actually, not only did they pray in a supernatural language, speak in a supernatural language, but they also got so happy, people thought they were intoxicated. <laughs> they thought they were drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and so on the day of Pentecost, the people got so filled. Yeah. And the power of God, the fire of God, the presence of God, and in His presence is fullness of joy. They got so full of joy People just thought they were intoxicated, not not 
just because they're speaking in another language, but because they were acting drunk. They participated. They drank. Yeah, well, somebody said life is not meant to go through sober. In other <laughs> words, in other words, people, uh, people drink all kinds of stuff, use all kinds of drugs. Really, all you need is to be filled, filled. with the Holy Spirit. Filled, filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Filled and filled again. Yes, and it's, it's him. He brings, this is his personality. Yeah. And when you recognize him, say, Holy Spirit, Come on, help me. Uh, I drink from you. I believe in Jesus. You know, yeah. then he manifests. And when he comes, mm. he brings his joy to the party. Yeah. And so here is a quote from Smith Wigglesworth. Here's a quote from Smith Wigglesworth. And praise the Lord. That's a funny name. It's a good name. A quote from Smith Wigglesworth. Wigglesworth. <laughs> Wigglesworth. So what was that quote? Um, the quote from Smith Wigglesworth, I'm actually waiting on my camera people to switch me for this okay, quote. Okay, okay. Mark wants the attention. There you go. Yeah. Good. I mean, we got all kinds of good things happening. All right. So here's a quote from Smith Wigglesworth. He said, our only safeguard from dropping back to our natural mind from which we can receive nothing from God is to be filled and filled again with the Holy Spirit. He said, our only safeguard from dropping back to our natural mind and he said, in the natural mind, 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, we cannot receive anything from God. So he said, our only safeguard from dropping back to our natural mind is to be filled and filled again with the Holy Spirit. So there's something about being filled with the Holy Spirit that enables us to receive from God. And so I like to say the Holy Spirit takes our receiving from God to a whole unlimited new dimension. He does. And something it's something that we do mindfully and on purpose. Mm -hmm. And get into the habit yeah. of drinking. It's not an accident, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, you that know you, when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, it's not like an accident. Well, you, you determine this is what we're going to do. You purpose to be filled. Mm -hmm. I have this little app I've been using on my phone, and it helps me to be more mindful about what I put in my mouth. <laughs> And so I'm, it helps you to lose some weight because, you, you know, if you think about what you're putting in your mouth, you might make a different choice. But one of the main things it says is drink water. Drink water. Drink water. All right. you know, first of all, drink water has no calories. That's good. And every part of our body needs water. Yeah. And uh, you feel full when you drink water. Mm -hmm. And so I have to be mindful. And I go on that little app and I go... I drink this many ounces, that many. I have all my glasses are lined up, my cups. Yeah, because I've been drinking water, and I make mm. sure I drink lots of water. I mm. think that Christians need to have that in their minds, that am I drinking from the Holy Spirit? How many times have I drank from the Holy Spirit today? How many times have I acknowledged Him? How many times mm. have I said, Hallelujah, or ha ha ha, or and Jesus just called that to him. living water. Living water, yeah. Or, or um, he said, "You draw from the wells of salvation this water." That's my verse. Yeah, with joy, <laughs> with joy, you yes. draw water. Yes. from the wells of salvation, and so then he told the woman at the well, "If you'll drink this water." You'll be satisfied. You'll be satisfied. You'll never thirsty. She was so, so thirsty. So the Holy Spirit really is like compared there to living to water, living water, and uh, to a rivers of living water, to a well of salvation mm -hmm. where you can draw up with mm -hmm. joy. Mm -hmm. That Isaiah twelve it says, "Behold, God is my salvation; mm -hmm. I will trust; I will not be afraid." And then it says, "Therefore." With joy, mm. I will draw water from wells yeah. of salvation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So behold God. Look to God. And then begin to drink from him. He will satisfy. He satisfies. He satisfies. The longing soul. He does. Fills the hungry with his goodness. So thank God for the Holy Spirit. And on the day of Pentecost, when they were filled, well, that wasn't the, the last time they were filled. Mm -hmm. Actually, in Ephesians 5, 18, it says, don't be drunk with wine. Mm -hmm. In other words, you don't need to be under the influence of, of wine or whiskey or the mm -hmm. things of this world. Mm -hmm. um, he said, but be filled 
with the Spirit, or be being filled, or um, the importance of maintaining a Spirit-filled life. Mm. And so when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, there is this joy in the Holy Ghost. So look at Acts 13, 52. Did you find that one? Acts 13, Acts 13 52. 52. I like that. So you're reading still in the book of Acts from Acts chapter 1, 8, Acts chapter 2, and then uh, Romans 14, 17. But now look at Acts 13, 52. And it says, the disciples. The disciples were continually filled throughout their souls with joy and the Holy Ghost. And that comes right after verse 51. In verse 51, uh, the disciples did something like shaking the dust off their feet. Wow, what would happen? They had been in uh, a city where everybody was against them. Mm. I mean, it just wasn't one person that was against them. Everyone, all the Jewish people had stirred each other up, and they were after the disciples. They hated the gospel, mm. and they hated these people. And they were giving them trouble, talking bad about them, accusing them, mm. persecuting them. And this is what the disciples did. They shook the dust off their feet. They just said, I'm not, I'm not carrying that along with me. I'm leaving that behind. Huh. And the next thing they did, they were filled continually Shake with the joy. dust of the past off yeah. and of people's opinions yeah. off and stay full of joy and yeah. full of the Holy Spirit. They just went on their way. Shake it off. Shake it off. Amen. And so... <laughs> The disciples were continually, it says, filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So you really cannot get a sad Holy Ghost. In other words, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's job is to take everything that Jesus has done for us. That would include the triumph of Christ mm -hmm. or his victory. Mm -hmm. So we have such a consciousness of the triumph of Christ when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, that he takes everything Jesus has done for us and translates that into personal victory. Mm -hmm. Or he takes what Christ has done for us and makes it real, our reality, mm -hmm. not just a theology, but an experience mm -hmm. of victory and reality. I like how you say he makes it real. Because when Jesus was speaking about the Holy Spirit in John the fourth chapter to the woman that he met at the well, who was dissatisfied with yeah. all of her lovers she'd ever had. Yeah. Everything was a disappointment in her life. She was a dry, thirsty she, woman. Yeah. But when he spoke to her, he talked to her about this water. And then he said, and God, this water comes from God. And he said, God is looking for you. He's looking for worshipers mm. who will worship him in spirit and in mm -hmm. truth. Yeah. And that word in the Amplified is mm -hmm. reality. Yeah. There is reality in worshiping God. This water, this experience mm. with the Holy Spirit is so real yeah. and it's so life changing. Yeah. It changed her life. Yeah, the Holy Spirit is real and um, uh, his presence it's very real. is a reality. Yes. And uh, his job, Jesus said, when he comes, he's going to move in you. And he's going to be with you forever. <laughs> so, so you thought, well, if he came and stayed a few weeks or if he went to, you know, um, training, like I sent my dog to training for a month. And so Jesus said, well, you're going to need more than a month of training. So matter of fact, the Holy <laughs> Spirit, he said, how about a year? No, he's going to have to stay with you forever. So the Holy Spirit just keeps working with us. He keeps working Year with us. after year. Yes. Day after day. Yes. And when you get up in the morning, he's there. He brings to your remembrance everything that Jesus has said to you. It's so wonderful. He's a constant companion. And, um, you know, I was just, that reminds me of something that I was reading about the amount of time people spend on their devices every day. Do you know that it's 10 to 12 hours every day? Mm. Can you imagine? How would it be, you know, we're reading yeah. the comments, reading advice, getting yeah. news, but the Holy Spirit is our constant companion. Yeah. If we acknowledged him at least several minutes every hour, yeah. mindfully saying, yeah. Holy Spirit, I'm checking in with you. Yeah. I'm drinking you right now. Wow. He could bring us the latest news from heaven. Mm. <laughs> so you're actually drinking so, uh, from the presence of Jesus, from the presence of the Lord, 
so that you have not just a thinking relationship with God, mm -hmm. but you have a drinking whereby you're filled and you're satisfied, or you drink from his presence. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, come unto me and drink. So you've got to do more than just think. You've got to drink from the presence of the Lord. And that's what the Holy Spirit does, that he brings you into a personal experience, a personal filling with the presence of the Lord. And yesterday you talked about in John 14, 15, 16, how that the Holy Spirit, he takes the thoughts of Christ and he reveals them to you. And the very mm. thoughts that are in yeah. Christ, Jesus said the Holy Spirit will teach them to you. Yeah. He'll impart them to you. Just think about, he brings the very mind of Christ. Mm. Paul said, you have the mind of Christ. Yeah. So he, if we're mindfully thinking, we say, Holy Spirit, I'm going to acknowledge you. He will think through your mind. He'll give you the very thoughts. Mm. He'll give, he's a genius. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, he'll make us act like a genius <laughs> instead of foolish. Yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah. the latest news from heaven. Yeah, so the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, when he comes, he's going to move on the inside of you. Every believer, he's going to be in you forever. One of the interesting scriptures in Corinthians, the apostle yeah. Paul says, yeah. uh, know you not that you are the temple of God mm -hmm. and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Mm -hmm. Know you not. So he's really talking to believers, even spirit-filled believers, mm -hmm. and he's talking to them about their conduct, their behavior. But he says, don't you know that you are the temple of God mm -hmm. and the Spirit of God lives in you? So this consciousness, don't you know? Other translations say, are you not aware? Are you not conscious? Or one translation says, have you forgotten mm. that you are the temple of God and the spirit of God lives in you? So there's something that happened through the blood covenant, through the new covenant, that God, the spirit of God, moved inside of the believer. Uh, years ago, Pastor Cho said, Yonggi Cho from Seoul, Korea, he said that, that God changed his address, that now he lives inside of the believer. So he's not that far away. And so Paul says, don't you know by now? Have you forgotten? Are you not aware? Are you not conscious? Don't you know? Remember this. Hmm. Have you forgotten? You are the temple of God and the spirit of God lives in you. <laughs> What an amazing revelation from the Apostle Paul that now because of the blood of Jesus and now in the new creature and the new creation, mm -hmm. now you are the temple of God. The Spirit of God lives in you. Mm -hmm. In the Old Testament, they took the temple with them wherever they went. As they moved along, you know, they would bring the temple and then they set it up. That's where God dwelled. Mm -hmm. And His presence was in there Uh and he manifested mm. himself. He spoke through that yeah. place. Thank God that he's moved from that yeah. into our temple. Yeah. Like you said in 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 1 Corinthians 6, 19, we yeah. are the you, your body. So we need to be kind to our bodies, you know? Yeah. This the is The Spirit God's of God lives temple. in you, mm -hmm. so it's not that far away. And similar, Romans 8, 11 mm -hmm. says the same Spirit that raised Christ from the yes. dead dwells in you. He quickens your mortal body. So are you aware that the Holy Spirit himself, the Spirit of God dwells in you, lives on the inside mm. of you? So that means your victory, your deliverance, your healing, your blessing is as close as the inside of you as a believer. That means you learn to recognize mm -hmm. and respond mm -hmm. or yield to the Holy Spirit. When you yield to the Holy Spirit, then he rises up on the inside of us and then he changes the way we think, changes the way we talk, and he makes Jesus real or big to us. He, he confirms the word. Where is that in the book of Acts? He confirms he the word confirms with signs following. The word with signs following. As you speak the word, he's right there on the inside. Mark 16, he inspires 20. you with yeah. Mark 16, 16 20. 20. That's important yeah. because when you speak that word, 
He inspires you to speak the word. Yeah. And then you say it, and he confirms that word. He's right there with the word. He works with the word to confirm that word mm. and manifest the results. And so today, I believe there are people that are watching today. You might be going through something in your physical body, mm. but the word of God is coming to yeah. you. The Holy Spirit is on the inside, and he immediately confirms the word of God. Mm. Uh, the same spirit that raised Jesus from yeah. the dead. It himself took your infirmity mm. for your sickness. With his stripes, you were healed. Yeah. And he's working in you mm. to make and manifest the yeah. power of that word. Yeah. And he confirms the word in you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And so the, the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. And then Paul said something very interesting in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 mm -hmm. through verse 21. And this is really a prayer for all believers, including spirit-filled believers. So this is really a daily prayer and a daily yes. experience. Beautiful. And that is, Father God, I'm asking you that you would grant me or grant us, according to the riches of your glory, to be strengthened with mighty power by your spirit, by the Holy Spirit himself Amen. in my inner man. Amen. In the inner man that Christ would dwell in your heart by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the length and the depth and the breadth and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled. Filled. There's the word filled again. <laughs> that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Other translations say that you may have the richest measure of the divine presence and be filled and flooded with God. God. Wow. <laughs> flooded, filled with the Spirit of God. Filled with God. And yeah. then he says in verse 20, yeah. And now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to his power that works in us. Hallelujah. So we need to be filled and yeah. filled again. Yeah. With the Holy yeah. Ghost. Yeah. So he, this is a prayer for believers, mm -hmm. and it really contains some pretty amazing uh, revelation. And so he says, uh, according to the riches of his glory, that you'd be strengthened with might or mighty power by the Holy Spirit in your inner man. So there is the, the Holy Spirit in us strengthening our inner man. Our one translation says his spirit working or strengthening your spirit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with new strength mm -hmm. on the inside of you. Or you could say a fresh anointing or new strength mm -hmm. in your inner man, mm -hmm. in your spirit. And when he says that, he says that you become conscious that Christ dwells in your heart. The Hallelujah. anointed one lives in you. Amen. 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 That's verse 16, being strengthened. The Amplified Bible says, and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man. So strengthened and reinforced. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to reinforce parts of a building. Yeah. It makes me think of that wonderful illustration about the buildings you saw <laughs> in San Diego well, years year, ago. Years ago, we were in San Diego and uh, kept driving back from our hotel to the church and saw these uh, uh, buildings that were 20, 30, 40 stories high. And then they had a big steel cable outside the building. And the steel cable would go from one corner, the top, down to the bottom corner. Then it'd go from the other corner to the top, down to the other bottom, the opposite corner. And so we drove by that day after day. Mm -hmm. So I asked the one, the person driving us from the church, I said, so what are those steel cables on those buildings? He said, well, I don't know. I said, well... I'd like to know what they are. So um, he looked it up, and um, we looked it up, and we came back, and we said, um, they call that seismic retrofit. Seismic retrofit. What does that mean? In other words, those buildings, when they were built, were not constructed to be able to withstand a earthquake. Mm -hmm. And in that area, there could be different uh, uh, 
uh, earthquakes with different strengths. Mm -hmm. And so he said they put these steel cables on the outside of the building to strategically strengthen that building so that when an earthquake comes, the building would not collapse. Uh-huh. So they strengthened <laughs> the building strategically mm -hmm. so that it would not collapse. And there's many things and storms and quakes and things that would shake us and shake our lives. But we have a seismic retrofit that comes into our inner man from the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And we are yes. strengthened strategically by the Holy Spirit so we will not collapse yes. when things are shaken. Yes. I believe today you are being strengthened. As you hear this word, there is some power from yeah. the Holy Spirit. Maybe it wasn't there before, like those buildings. Yeah. They weren't built that way. But it's not too late. The Holy Spirit comes in and he reinforces you on the inside. Amen. And helps you to stand when everything around you is wow. falling down. You're not going to fail. This is your finest hour. You're going forward. Yeah. You're standing in the middle of the storm. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because of not hmm. your strength, not by your mighty power, but by the spirit of the living God that's working in you. Yeah. Seismic retrofit. I like that. And, and Romans 14, 4 says that God is able to make you stand. Mm -hmm. In other words, he's also referring to a brother or a sister going through a trial or going through a challenge. He says, God is able to make them stand. Mm -hmm. So whatever situation you're dealing with, God is able to make you stand. Actually, the other scripture says he's able to keep you from falling or from collapsing and present you in his presence with great joy. So God's able to keep you from falling. He's able to make you stand. So the Holy Spirit strengthens you in your inner man with mighty power. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Mighty power. He strengthens your inner man so that you will not collapse. Hallelujah. It makes me uh, think about Peter when he was in the water. He was walking on the water for one moment, and then the next yeah. minute he was sinking. Sinking, yeah. And he called on the name of Jesus. Every time we call on the name of Jesus, salvation comes, yeah. deliverance, help. And Jesus stretched out his hand and pulled him up. And that was a strong hand. Yeah. That was a strong arm. Yeah. And so sometimes it seems like I need, I need your hand on yeah. me. And Jesus' hand, he sends his strength. And sometimes he sends his strength to you in the voice of a fellow believer, yeah. even right now. And, you know, Paul went around strengthening the church's mark. Yeah. Says about Paul in Acts 18, 23, hmm. that he went on a journey and he yeah. found people in churches and he imparted yeah. new strength to them. He went about the different churches mm -hmm. and he strengthened the disciple. So there is a supernatural strength. Actually, Isaiah says that God gives power to, to the, the faint. faint and to them who have no might. He increases strength. strength. So he strengthens your Amen. inner man, which includes your spirit, includes your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, your power to resolve, your strength to perform. Yeah. He strengthens your inner man with mighty power mm -hmm. by the indwelling Holy Spirit. So that's a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Yeah. <laughs> He's strengthening us. Another yeah. verse that speaks of that strength, that mighty strength, is one that really stood out to me, and I heard it, really heard it in here from your granny. Yeah. <laughs> and granny stood up, and she testified, and she gave her favorite verse that day, and she had a shaky voice. She said, fear not. <laughs> well, my granny. I am with thee. She's 96 but years old. But this is a verse that the Holy Spirit had strengthened her with, you know, Granny, she lived in a, you know, difficult marriage because your poppy yeah. was uh, an alcoholic. Yeah. And On my mother's side, my yeah. grandpa uh, was an alcoholic most all of his life. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't easy, but she had found a place in God, mm -hmm. a place of strength that took her up out of all that 
turmoil yeah. and fear. And she stayed in that difficult situation, but God kept her. And she found this verse. He sends his word to you. And she's quoted this verse, and I'll never forget that day. But I'm going to read it to you in the Amplified Bible because mm. I like it. It says, fear not. There is nothing to fear. Mm. For I am. That's I am. The I am that stood with Moses. Yeah. Said, don't be afraid of Pharaoh. Just say what I tell you to say. He said, I am with you. Do not look around you in terror. So that's a key. That's what Peter was doing. He mm. was looking at the water, you know, being fearful. So God says, don't look around. And because that will cause you to be dismayed or distracted and fall to pieces. He said, but for I am your God. Mm. Again, he said, I am. He identified himself. I am. I'm not only the I am that stood with all the people in the Bible. I am your I am. Yeah. I will. That's a promise from God. Strengthen and harden you to difficulties. So you might be going through a particular difficulty. You think, wow, I've never been this way. I can't, can't do this any longer. No, God will give you strength and yeah. he will harden you. Mm. It's like an armor around you. Yeah. He's, he's a mighty armor and he protects you. Mm. Hallelujah. And strengthens you, hardens you to those difficulties so you don't even feel it. You're mm. safe in him. Mm. And he says, yes, I will help you. Again, he says that. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of mm. rightness and justice. Yeah. Maybe things are wrong all around you, but God is right. He is your righteousness. And he picks you up in his hand. He said, I'm holding you in my rightness and justice. It's not over. I'm on your side. Amen. I'm fighting this battle. And I am the strength of yeah. your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Today. Well, amen. So amen. he strengthens our inner man with mighty power. With mighty power. Now, what does the proverb say about that? It says the... The, the strong spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. Yes. So that means when you're in a time of weakness or challenge, mm -hmm. then a strong spirit will um, sustain you, keep you from collapsing when you're in a time of uh, infirmity or challenge. He says, but a wounded or broken spirit who can bear. So that means when your, your spirit is strong, you can really tell when your spirit is strong, by how you react to adversity. So there's several ways that he strengthens your inner man. So let's look at several ways that you're strengthening your inner man by the indwelling Holy Spirit. Actually, just by the things that the Holy Spirit is and that he does, mm -hmm. that's one way he'll strengthen your inner man. But he, by praying in the Holy Spirit, yes. also says this, or Jude it says this, he says, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying, praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping yourself in the love of God. So praying in the Holy Spirit, Paul said, my spirit is edified or strengthened when I pray in the Holy Spirit. So when your spirit is strong, then the devil cannot dominate you. Uh, your flesh cannot rule you, your feelings or circumstances. So you cannot be defeated unless you are spiritually depleted. Ooh. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and so I, I like to say it this way sometimes, like with your phone, your phone, you know, you could have like a, a thousand apps on your phone or a hundred thousand. And so uh, when there's too many apps open, it runs your battery down real fast. So sometimes people got way too many apps open. In other words, you need to have one app open when you're looking to the Word of God, yep. Yep. you're yielding to the Holy Spirit, yep. and let Him strengthen your inner man or Amen. charge your inner man mm -hmm. with mighty power. And so the Holy Spirit does that. Praying in the Holy Spirit does that. It gives me a picture when you said that charged up, you know, um, you got the line that charges your phone. But when you fill up, you know, it says be filled and filled again. When you fill your car up with gas or fuel, you um, put that hose. You don't just spray it everywhere. You just put it on the, the, the tank. It goes yeah. straight into the tank. It's from, from uh, the dispenser into the your energy. car. Yeah. And it fills you up and you watch the gauge go up all the way up, yeah. all the way up until you are full. Yeah. 
And if you keep on going, it's going to fall out and get all over your shoes. <laughs> so be filled and filled again. And so Paul said that in Ephesians, the third uh, chapter, to be filled, granted. Mm. Uh, he said, Lord, that you would grant to us to be filled. Mm. Yeah. I'd like to see it overflowing According with mighty According to the riches strength. of his glory. Glory. Yeah, that means so, other translation says the, uh, the, the, the rich resources in his presence. The rich resources, the unlimited resources that you would be strengthened in your inner man Praise by the Holy God. Spirit. So everything Amen. that's in God, Amen. that you might be filled with the fullness, with of, the fullness God. of God. Praise the Lord. And so if you're filled with his glorious strength, that that's, means that when you're being filled, you're yeah. drawing from the Holy Spirit, mm. acknowledging him, you are in his glory. Yeah. You are in his presence. His presence. Wow. There's so fullness you, of joy. Yeah. And that <laughs> joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. So when you lose your joy, you can see that, uh, you're going to be in a weakened condition. Okay. All right. So here's several things that strengthen us as believers. Mm -hmm. One is being filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. All right. Two mm -hmm. is the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Three is supernatural relationships or right. friendships. Right. Four is joy in the Holy Ghost. Five is a man has strength by the answer of his mouth. Okay. All right. So there's several ways he strengthens us. Uh, number one is the Holy Spirit, the indwelling Holy Spirit. Number two is by feeding or meditating on the Word. Number three, supernatural relationships, mm -hmm. friendships. Mm -hmm. Paul says about the body of Christ, mm -hmm. Colossians and Ephesians. He said there's a supply that flows through the whole body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So you have supernatural relationships, and when you're with those relationships, receiving a supply, then you're strengthened. So sometimes just being like you know, where you're supposed to be, some right. assembly required. Right. We call this ecclesiology, which is the study of the church or supernatural relationships. And Paul said that each joint supplies. Mm -hmm. So there's strength that comes mm -hmm. from some assembly. So you can see that, mm -hmm. that uh, for people to be disassembled mm. is going to cause them to be in a condition of weakness. Oh, and so and being, sadness, yeah. depression. Yeah. So you, yeah. there's some assembly required mm -hmm. because the strength comes that way. So several ways that strength, we are strengthened in our inner man as we wait upon the Lord we meditate on the word, yeah. we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we honor supernatural relationships, mm -hmm. we learn to speak the word of God, and then we stay full of joy. That's right. And that's what uh, Hebrews 10, 25, forsaking not the assembly yeah. of ourselves together. Yeah. So we give attention to one another and stir each other up. Yeah. You know, when we get together, we stir each other. It's amazing. Sometimes, you know, our emotions can go like this. And I can be kind of like this on the downside of the hill. <laughs> but if I get with you or somebody else in the body, a friend, we just spark each other. We're spark sparklers. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we just get it. There's up again. a supply. There's a supply of strength mm -hmm. that comes from supernatural relationships. Mm -hmm. All right. So the Holy Spirit. So I encourage you to get this book called The Holy Spirit is a Genius. If you'll listen to him, he'll make you look smart. So we encourage you to get the book. It is our free gift to you. All you have to do is go to markhankins.org and say, I want the free Amen. book on the Holy Spirit. Or you just call our office at 318-767-2001. And one of our wonderful workers in the office will just send the book to you as fast as we can. Or if you're from another country other than the United States, we'll send you a PDF version of this book. The Holy Spirit is a genius. So learning to be filled with the Holy Spirit and learning to recognize, respond, or yield to the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. is the key to our victory. So you cannot be defeated, cannot be defeated unless you're spiritually depleted. In other words, yeah. Paul said that your inner man is strengthened day by day. Paul said, even though my outward man is going through adversity, my inward man is strengthened day by day. So every single day. So if you miss 
a few days of strengthening in your inner man from the Holy Spirit or from the Word or, or from prayer, spending time in the presence of God, mm -hmm. or from supernatural relationships, mm -hmm. or you lose your joy, <laughs> you're going to be in a depleted condition. Mm -hmm. And so the enemy will attack your mind, attack your thought life. it will attack uh, circumstances will arise in your life. And you see that Satan's out to steal, kill, and destroy. So you might want to set your, your phone on, get some alarms going and say, Drink from the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Every few minutes. Yeah. Every, every hour. And drink every from day. From the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and then you can hear the word. Go to Mark Hankins Ministries app, yes. which is a free download. That'll fill you up. Free download. <laughs> and you can listen to all the messages free any time of the day. Just go to the app and say, I, I, I want to watch this or I want to listen to this message and just pu push a button and you can hear the word. And that'll strengthen your inner man. I love hearing the word. And so then you can also just go to the website or you can download those messages mm -hmm. free at the mm -hmm. website. Go to markhankins.org and then just say, I want to download this message or that message. All of it, we made it all free for you. Or you can watch your daily TV program on the Victory, Kenneth Copeland Network, the Victory Network, uh, every day, Monday through Friday. And we have some wonderful times in the, in the TV programs. And so you need to watch that or you can record it on uh, the Victory Network, Kenneth Copeland Network on Direct TV, which is it. on Direct TV. It's channel 366. Yeah. And I watch channel 366 a lot on the Victory uh, like network it. on Direct yeah. TV, or if you have the Dish Network, it's two, channel two sixty five. Or if you live in the Arkansas area, Victory Television Network from uh, Little Rock there, and we're on every day at four thirty. Mm -hmm. So get the word and order the book, absolutely free to you. And we are making great progress on our conference center. Coming right along. Yeah, and I just was out there yesterday, and they're they're digging a real long ditch from the highway out to the conference center. I mean, it's about three or four feet deep. It's and big. it's got moving a, dirt out of yeah, there. Yeah, and, and this water line oh. that'll supply the sprinkler system, but also water for the whole building. And so um, we are making great progress. Uh, we're believing God for about one point five million dollars so we need about another five hundred thousand dollars and that Coming money in. will come in yeah. and so one way you can give whatever you want to give large or small you know if you give just a little bit towards the conference center that's wonderful it all adds up or if you want to give a larger amount we were asking for uh, another 500 people to give a thousand dollars and that would uh, put us over the top on our conference center. So the money will come. We thank you for being a partner with us and yes. uh, your partnership helps us distribute the word around the world. And our next book to be distributed will be to, uh, in Turkey, but it's actually written for, uh, Iranians that are living in Turkey, kind of, uh, I yeah. guess in exile or something. Mm -hmm. And so there's many of them living there thousands. And so one of our books, uh, so to be translated excited. there in, in Farsi. the language of Farsi. Yes. So we're working on that right now. And uh, so wonderful things are happening in other languages. Your partnership enables us to do that. And uh, the spirit of faith is going right into uh, Iran. Praise the Lord. Woo! So, Say that again. Yeah, the it spirit cost of faith a, is going into Iran. Yeah, oh, it hallelujah. cost about $5,000 to get a book translated and distributed. Uh, and we distribute to people, believers, uh, free. So your, your offering towards that helps us distribute the word, support missions around the world, mm -hmm. and the word is working mightily. Yes. So we thank you so much for being a partner with us. Some give every week. Some give uh, once a month. Uh, some give periodically when they can. We thank you, every partner of Mark Hankins Ministries. It enables me and Trina to preach the word around the world. Thank you so much for being a partner. And you can give on the website, markhankins.org. You can donate or give there. You can text to give. You can also just mail an offering to P.O. Box 12863. Uh, if you would like to be a, a monthly partner, as soon as you start giving, then we'll put you on our monthly uh, newsletter, and where we write an article every month 
that is full of faith, full of the Holy Ghost. And or you can faith. you can give just yes. by calling the office at 318-767-2001. So as you have received instruction in the Word of God, Galatians 6, 6 says, you've been taught in the Word, then it says communicate to where you receive that instruction from, that teaching from. Mm -hmm. And all good things simply means that as you've been blessed with the goodness of God, you be a partner and you give where you've received revelation and that actually causes the word to reach other people, but it also affects you in a supernatural way when you receive the word and you give. I love that word partner. We all have a part of what God has given us to do, the assignment, and you know, we don't want to miss it. Yeah. We want to get in on it. We are living in the last days. Jesus is coming soon in the mm. gospel is the power of God, and it, Jesus said it'll go to every nation. Yeah, and so it is critical. And the Bible says even the devil knows his time is short. Mm -hmm. So there's tremendous attacks on our nation and on our generation. Mm -hmm. And so, but we were born for such a time as mm -hmm. this to preach the gospel of Christ in our generation mm -hmm. around the world this, with the spirit of faith, with the power of mm -hmm. the Holy That's Ghost. Right. And so we thank you so much for being a partner with us and thank you so much for helping somebody else receive that word That's right. on the other side of the That's world. That's right. We're not Amen. going backwards. It's time to step forward. Amen. So we're moving forward Amen. with great strength and we're not holding back any Amen. part of what Jesus told the church Amen. to do. And there is a whopper of blessing that's Amen. coming to you because when he says you sow generously and you will reap generously and God blesses us not only financially, mm -hmm. but our giving actually opens the door to every need being met, Amen. Paul every said, need. as a partner. He said in, in uh, Philippians 4, he said you gave once and you gave again. He said your giving came up before God. Yeah. I love that when you're a giver, it gets God's attention. Yes. And you're a generous giver. He said, you gave once, you gave again, and your giving came up before God like a sweet smell of worship. Amen. So you can actually worship God without singing. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, your giving came up like yes. worship before it's a God. Memorial. Yeah. And so God paid attention to your giving. Mm -hmm. You see that many times in the Bible is generous giving and it just gets God's attention. Mm -hmm. And he said, and because you gave once, you gave again until we had more than enough. In other words, they didn't stop giving until Paul had more than enough. And so they didn't say, well, I gave enough. I did my part and they stopped. No, they <laughs> kept giving until he said, we got more than enough. More and than then enough. it says, and now my God shall supply all oh, of your amen. need according to his riches in glory by amen. Christ Jesus. Amen. Think about the riches of his glory and my God shall supply all of your needs. So, Whatever need wow, you have. I expect that. Yes. I declare that in your life, in your church, in your ministry. And in your body. Uh, in your family, in your job, in your business, in your body, in your relationships. Mm -hmm. My God shall supply all, all of your, your need, need according to his riches, riches in, in glory. glory. Wow. Amen. Amen. So if you've enjoyed today's program on the Holy Spirit, or even yesterday's program on the Holy Spirit, then you share it on your social media so other people can get it. We'll rebroadcast this program tonight at 9 o'clock, 9 p.m. tonight. And so you can watch it or encourage other people and receive strength in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. So I encourage you Thank to get you the Lord. free book, The Holy Spirit's a Genius. It is our gift to you. Study it and make room for the Holy Ghost. Yield to the Holy Ghost and watch him empower you for your future and for God's best And blessings. reinforce you. You're not falling, you're standing. You will not collapse today and you will not collapse the rest of your life. You will not collapse physically or mentally or Amen. emotionally because you are strengthened in your inner man with mighty power. Wow, amen. So God bless you abundantly. And so until tomorrow, wow, boldly confess that Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord.